Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we are going to be working on the first gen Tacoma. I'm going to be going wheeling this upcoming weekend and it'll be the first time using this truck really out on some trail with the new Chevy 63 leaf springs. I'm awfully excited about. Uh, a couple things that I need to do maintenance wise on the truck camper is new manual transmission fluid. Went ahead and coughed up the cash for the good stuff, the proper GL4 MT90. And then I'm also going to be a adding an extended brake line, which means I unfortunately have to bleed the whole system afterwards, but it'll be a good time to do it anyways. So extended brake line for the rear axle, and then uh, just some more tidying up as I go. And then I also have a few things to show you guys in the truck camper, a couple things that I need to change up, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, I think I figured this out here. Get my pan ready, drain bolt and fill bolt somewhere right up here, right here. I think 24 mil. So first I wanna get the fill off. That's a fun angle. I just feel like I'm gonna whack my arms. <laughs> As soon as this comes loose. Oh, no way. All right. I'm gonna try the DeWalt. Like a dream. Okay, I'm just gonna get the pan underneath it in case anything comes out. Good, a little bit. I was hoping to see that. Next, I wanna take out the drain, which is right here. Okay, that one was not as bad. Fluid looks okay, to be honest. I don't see any big chunks in the magnetic bolt. So I cleaned up both the fill and the drain bolt with a wire brush. Uh, really, oh, that's gross, that's still dripping. Gear oil just smells the worst. Um, I cleaned these both, oh, I cleaned these both up. Brand new washers from Toyota. They're the same washer on both. And uh, I'm gonna put the drain back in and then we're gonna fill up obviously from the fill bolt. So we'll leave that out for now. And these should be about 27 foot pounds. So that should be snug. And now I haven't quite figured out how I'm gonna fill up because <laughs> I can't quite get a bottle. I can almost get it level, but you really need to have it higher up. So I'm not totally sure how I'm gonna knock this out yet. All right, spark of genius. This is how I'm gonna fill up the transmission. I just basically chained together <laughs> different sections of hose that I had laying around to create this longer piece so that way I can, from the wheel well, feed it in there. Well, let me just show you. So I take this end and I put it into the fill bolt hole on the transmission and put it in maybe an inch or two. And now I can hold this and let gravity do its thing. Pour the MT90 into the funnel. Looks good. Catch cans below it and we're just gonna fill it up until it starts pouring back out of the fill hole. It's going really slowly. <laughs> this might take a while. All right, I'm not gonna bore you with the rest of this. I'll catch you guys when I've got two, two and a half quarts put in there. With the transmission fluid done, I'm gonna move on to this bumper. Actually, one of you guys said, why don't you just paint the bumper black again? I think that's a great idea. Obviously, I put the vinyl wrap on these chrome pieces, which turned out really mediocre, but this whole bumper is just super gray, and I'm gonna go ahead and pull it off. But before I do that, I wanted to show you guys, I fixed the gap. Because of the body lift, the one inch body lift, there was a one inch gap here, and I managed to finally get the, I don't know what you would call them, spacers that came with the kit. I finally got them to actually work. So, bumper is on there. This bumper doesn't do a whole lot as far as protection, but I'm gonna try and make it look a little bit better with some black spray paint. I think bumper should be ready to come off. 
Uh, I might have to loosen those up. Come on, bud. That side's out. There we go. Front bumper's off. I'm gonna try and do a clean job on this. So I'm gonna take out these turn signals, which is just a Phillips head. Looks like on both sides. Oh, those, I thought those had to come out. You just unscrew it. That's pretty easy. Next, I'm gonna try and peel off this vinyl wrap because I don't want to paint over it. Although I did wrap it around the edges, so this might be a little tricky. I wonder if it would just be easier to take it off. There we go. Okay. Here we are after, I want to say, three or four coats of primer on the bumper, as well as those little chrome bumper guards. So I've been letting it sit and dry in the sun for about 15 minutes, and I'm now I'm going to start laying on the color, which is just a, I think I got flat or matte black. We'll see how it looks, but uh, just a cheap upgrade for this old tired bumper. I ended up going out for one more can of black spray paint just because I wanted to do a couple extra layers on this, but bumper is all done. Those side pieces are all painted and now I'm just gonna let it dry and make you guys wait a little bit longer in this video to see me put it back on. And next, I want to knock out the rear brake line and then I think I wanna clean this truck up. That way it's fresh and spot clean for the new front bumper. Well, newly painted front bumper. Here is our new line. It's a stainless braided line that's I think three or four inches longer than the factory one. There's the part number from Tough Country, I think is the brand. This is the line on the truck we're gonna be replacing is this guy right here. So just gonna use a wrench to get that side loosened. This side, I've got these clamps set onto it so I can hold one end while with the 10 mil, I take off the nut there. And I'm also gonna try and cap off the brake line to reduce the amount of brake fluid that comes out, but I've got my catch can ready just in case. So try and do this fairly quickly. Hopefully we'll just drain that out into there. Not bad, I forgot to grab a rag, but so be it. And it looks like we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna lose a bit of fluid there. No problem. I'm gonna just wipe this connection a bit clean. That feels pretty snug. Here's the uh, old hose taken off and it's probably a good thing I'm replacing this. There's a bunch of hairline cracks in it. I don't know if the camera picks that up, but it wasn't leaking yet, but it was definitely starting to dry rot. Now we have an extended stainless steel line all plugged in. That top little fitting was kind of a pain to get in there. I thought I cross-threaded it a couple times, but finally got it seated. Uh, no torque spec for this because you can't really put a torque wrench on it or at least I don't have one that you can so that's going to be good for now and next I need to go around and bleed all of the brakes because we opened the brake line so now there's air in it so I'm going to go open up each one of those little nozzles focus focus well that little nozzle 
right there on the rotors. And I'm gonna start passenger rear, then go driver rear, passenger front, driver front. Bleed the whole system. took the truck out wheeling the other weekend and it performed pretty darn well. The trail was a bit more intense than I would have liked. The new Chevy Leafs were freaking awesome, not gonna lie. But I felt like the, ba the, the camper was almost useless because of how much the truck was rocking around on the trail and everything was just disorganized. And not to mention it felt like the back end was just being, I was having to like tow it. It was, uh, it didn't feel like it was getting over obstacles as easily as it maybe should have. Nonetheless, I'm kind of uh, digressing here. I have to go pick up furniture. I want to grab some new stuff. So I'm gonna take off the camper shell and uh, I'm gonna take the wooden camper part out, put it in the garage, which means that I'm gonna have to make some room by taking the prelude out and um, we'll see how it looks. It'll be nice to kind of just rock a pickup truck for a bit. I've emptied out most of the back of stuff. I gotta take the battery out, the fridge out, and then all the wood. But I think I can get the camper shell off after I take the fridge out. I know what some of you are thinking. How am I gonna get this camper shell off by myself? I've done it once before. I <laughs> used a trash can and picked it up, walked it out onto the tailgate and onto the trash can until I gave myself enough room, pushed it out, gave myself enough room to jump down, pick it up from here and then set it down where I want it. Not the most ideal, but it's the way she goes. First, I usually kind of get in the center of it and try and uh, use my, my legs, not my back. I'm pushing my back up against it, but I'm using my legs to push up. Usually it's helpful if you start from the corners, try and break them free. Ooh. Okay, there's one side. Okay, now I just gotta get the back. Ugh. Holy crap. Oh, oh. Okay. One more corner. Okay. Oh, that's, that's pretty much released. So now, take a break. Now I have to get in the center and kind of walk it out. And my goal is to put the, um, this side of the camper shell down on the tailgate and have the carpeting in the center kind of balancing on this trash can with a tire and a piece of foam on top. Whew. Let's see how it works out for him. Right, just gonna, oh crap, I forgot about the brake light. Oh, that would have been bad. All right, so I ended up just snipping the uh, wires off at the taillight harness. Now we should be good to give this a whirl. Off to a good start. Yeah, not what I wanted to have happen. 
Oh boy. Now I'm in a predicament. <sighs> okay, I gotta go back. Okay, there we go. <laughs> okay, that was not a good start. The goal is to slide it, not have it come off the way it just did. Just slide it straight. Come on. Oh, I'm just gonna take breaks. Holy heck. All right, so it's still balanced on most of its weight over here, but I'm gonna get to a point where it's gonna wanna teeter this way. And that's when I'm kind of fully committed to it. Okay, I feel like that's a lot of weight on my tailgate right now. And there we go, now we're at that point. So, Oh, I think it's sitting on the glass, isn't it? <sighs> All right, new plan. Stay there for a second, camera shell. <sighs> Holy crap. That's exhausting. Okay. I feel like I want it to not drop down so much because then it's putting me under a lot of strain to try and keep it from falling and pushing everything this way. These tailgate straps are doing the most right now. Oh boy. Okay. That's something. Let's see if I can walk this out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Not ideal. Okay. Oh my gosh. Most of the day is gone now, and I have spent it taking out the overload leaves on the Tacoma. Obviously, we got the camper shell off, the whole camper build taken out, but then I also spent the second half of the day taking out the overload leaf springs out of the leaf pack, which dropped it, I would say, I'm gonna say at least an inch. I mean, the size of the leaf that I took out was about three quarters of an inch to an inch, so that's about what I should have gotten. Although it looks like it dropped more than that. Anyways, I feel comfortable driving this car around without looking so much like a clown. And uh, it doesn't look as much like a drag car anymore or drag truck. But needless to say guys, I've dragged this video out over weeks. So I apologize for the lack of uploads, but we're gonna get it done. I'm gonna show you guys in the next video up to, uh, upcoming plans for both vehicles. So stick around for that. But thank you guys so much for sticking around with my my channel of just uh, inconsistency and uh, I don't know, I love you guys. I really appreciate the support. I'll see you in the next one. Keep elevating. Adios, my friends.